Hi, I'm Re from mummyof4.com. I help busy mums make their lives easier with parenting tips, tricks, hacks, and advice. And today I'm talking to you all about the different signs that you can look out for that your child may have autism. The reason I'm making this video is because my second son, William, has autism. He was diagnosed before his fourth birthday and I get a lot of questions about the signs to look out for. So I thought I would put together the seven things that um, are worth looking out for as signs of autism in your children um, in hope that it will help some other parents because I truly believe that the earlier you can get your child um, diagnosed if there is a problem, the more likely they are to get the help they need and the easier their lives will be. Now I want to start by saying I'm not a doctor or an autism specialist in any way, but I am a mum that knows a fair bit about autism from the experience of dealing with my son and going through the diagnosis process. So if your child is exhibiting any of these signs or symptoms, my suggestion would be to go and see your doctor or your health visitor and to just get it investigated. Um, just because they have these symptoms, it doesn't mean they have got autism and they might have none of these symptoms and still have autism. Um, the truth of the matter is that as parents, we're too close to it and we need a professional to tell us. But the idea of this video really is just to give you an idea of what to look out for and hopefully um, it will help some parents get the early intervention that they need for their children. The first thing to look out for is something called spiky development. Spiky development is a term that we was used a lot when William was being diagnosed. Really all that this means is that your child is doing very well in some areas and not so well at all in other areas. So in William's case, he could read quite fluently yet wasn't uh, speaking and conversing in the way you would expect him to for his age. So this kind of doing well versus not doing so well in different areas would indicate spiky development, which can be an indicator for autism. The next sign to look out for is eye contact or lack of it. So if when your child is speaking to you, they try to make eye contact or do not make eye contact, then not making eye contact could be a sign of autism. And when you try to engage with them, when you're speaking to them, are they looking at you or not? So if your child is not using eye contact in a way that you would expect them to, it's definitely worth talking to your health visitor about. Is your child using scripted speech or spontaneous language? Now, all this means is, are they using their own words or are they using other people's words in order to communicate? So William would not really use his own spontaneous language uh, before his diagnosis. He used to communicate using chunks of lines from books or television shows. I would ask him a question, say, are you okay, William? He would say, are you okay, William? Rather than say no or yes. So if your child, you feel, is using scripted speech in order to communicate rather than their own words, it's definitely worth speaking to a healthcare professional about. Something called hand over hand can be an indicator of autism. This is where a child will pick up your hand and try and use it as a tool to fix things or help them rather than bringing you something and, and asking for your help. So if you feel that your child is grabbing your hand and trying to use it to do things rather than trying to communicate with you and asking for your help, then that's worth looking into as well. Pointing and other gesture or lack thereof can be another sign of autism. So um, this would include things like pointing at things that they want, um, a lot of neurotypical children, and neurotypical is just the term for people that don't have autism. So neurotypical children will generally point at what they want and make noises before they can even speak. Children with autism won't generally do this. Um, other gesture doesn't necessarily come naturally to children with autism, such as waving, for example. So if you don't feel that your child is using a lot of gesture and they're not pointing at things, then speaking to someone such as the doctor would be worth doing. Showing empathy or not showing empathy, is this something that your child does? So children with autism in many cases won't show empathy in a way that you would expect. So if you um, were to hurt yourself or pretend to hurt yourself, does your child react to it? Do they want to comfort you? Do they want to comfort other children that are distressed or crying? Or are they just totally blank and unfazed by it? If they're not too bothered and not really showing empathy in a way you would expect, then that's worth speaking to someone about too. Another sign can be stimming um, behaviours. Now, this can be repetitive motions such as flapping 
or rocking, just any repetitive motion that a child is using to sort of comfort themselves can be a sign of autism. Lots of children with autism can have aversion to loud noises. Now I count us as very lucky because William doesn't seem to have this problem. Loud noise doesn't seem to bother him, maybe because we live in a loud house full of lots of people. Um, but a lot of children with autism will um, cope better if they're wearing e-defenders in order to sort of block out a lot of the noises. So if your child's really, really bothered by loud noise and not, not just a little bit or going through a little phase, but really bothered by it, then this could be another sign that they may be on the spectrum. Incredibly rigid routines or rituals can be a sign of autism too. William used to be very, very specific and still is really about so many things. Um, food especially, he would um, eat a very healthy diet, but it had to be exactly the same breakfast, exactly the same lunch and exactly the same dinner. And while each meal was balanced, he would not have any variation from it. Um, it had to be on the same plate, looking the same, the same colours. I had to make it to the point where when we went to France for two weeks, I had to take frozen meals that I had prepared myself or he would not have eaten. So if your child really is very, very rigid with things, you know, um, what they're wearing or what they're eating, then it's definitely worth talking to your health visitor about as this could be a sign of autism. So those are the seven things that I would they can be indicators of autism. Like I said, your child could have all seven and not have autism. They could have absolutely none of them and have autism. But if you have got any of concerns with any of those seven um, items or anything else at all uh, regard regarding your child's development, it's definitely worth chatting to your health visitor about. Because having been through the diagnosis process with Will, I know they will never diagnose a child that doesn't have autism. It is so um, thorough with their criteria. From the child's point of view, it's just playing. Um, it's not invasive or nasty. Um, and I just feel that as a mum, that I feel so much better knowing that they have been checked over and we know what we're dealing with because if you can get a diagnosis for your child and they need it, then their life will be made easier because you'll be able to understand them and help them so much better. And likewise, if you speak to your health visitor and they, nothing comes of it, at least you've asked someone else to look into it for you because really as parents, we're so close to it. It's hard to know if it's all in our minds and we're worrying over nothing or if there is something that really needs um, helping. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with anyone that you feel um, it may help. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. So speak to you soon. Bye.